Kusovica Royal Schwarzbier. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. Not going to lie to you, a little bit pissed off, just been watching West Ham and we drew two all with Man City. Now, you might think playing Man City, that's not a bad result, but we were 2 0 up and we're like a fucking bad dog walker. We cannot hold on to a lead, which is really frustrating, but at least we didn't lose. Mark Noble's last game as well for West Ham, so what a servant to the club he's been. One club man, which means a lot nowadays. You don't get many of them in, in football. Anyway, enough about football. Quick one, I was out last night on a stag do, and we ended up in a pub in Maidstone, and they had some Tunbridge Copper Knob Bitter on there. Really nice, really, really good. So if you're around the Kent area, and you see that on draft or on keg or cask or whatever it is, probably cask, then get some of that because that is fantastic. I was really impressed with that. They also had some landlord in the pub as well. That didn't last long, that went off. And I went on to the, the Tunbridge Copper Knob, which was really nice, I really enjoyed that. So there you go, little bit of a hangover today. So this is a bit of a hairy dog, but it's the Krusevica Royal Schwarzbier from the Czech Republic, which is making me think, why have they called it a Schwarzbier? Well, I think it could be because Schwarzbier is technically a German style, but I don't know why they've just not called it a dark beer or dark lager, because effectively that's what it is. Now I tried the Kozel dark beer and that was quite nice. Reminded me a little bit of a mild actually. And there's a little bit of a theme going on with these. Now I did try the Budvar dark lager, that was really good. Unfortunately, it's not too common in this country, in the UK. I'm sure you can get it in Europe, but in the UK, it's a little bit hard to get hold of. But I managed to get hold of some of this stuff which looks pretty decent. It sounds like a typical European dark lager or certainly a Czech dark lager. And the characteristics of that are, it's dark, it's usually got roasted malt flavors in it, but it's not too bitter. Now, that does put me in mind of a mild, but there are little characteristics that are, that are sort of different to that. Certainly the ABV on this. now. The Kozil, I think, was 3.6. This is 3.8. So it's it's a, a, a dark session beer, if you like. And I quite like it. I quite like the style. The Germans do it. The Czechs do it. Now, the Germans, they do a Dunkel, obviously, which is a dark lager. That's not the same as this. This is more akin to their Schwarz beer. You know, I'm, I'm telling you about suck eggs here, but that's what it is. It's, it's a black beer, basically. So there you go. A little bit about the brewery, they've been going a hell of a long time. They've been going since 1581. And the reason it's called Royal is because in 1853, this brewery was given to Emperor Rudolf II of Austria. And they sort of kept that crown as an emblem on their bottles and of the brewery as well. And they've kept the Royal title in there. Now, a few Czech breweries do this. There's the other one that does the Marks and Spence Lager, and for the hell, is it Royal Bohemia or something? I can't remember the name of it, because I'm such a twat. And Alzheimer's is kicking in early. But they've got a Royal prefix on it as well, so they do like the old crowns on their beers. Now, as you might expect, this, has been, this had been going since then, quite popular beer, but its rights got taken, or its brewing rights, got taken over by the state after 1945 because, as you know, in the communist bloc, there were no privately owned breweries. All the breweries were state owned. And that goes for East Germany, that goes for the Czech Republic, goes for Hungary, but basically anybody who was in the, the Warsaw Pact or under the Soviet Union, the Iron Curtain, if you like, you know what I mean though. 
But I think after 1992, I think for the Czech Republic, this became or back into private hands again. And as that was the case for most of the breweries in the old communist countries. And I use the term communist loosely because if you're a Pole, you'll obviously know that Poland was communist in name only. Nobody, well, hardly anybody in Poland was an ardent communist. They, they hated it. It went against everything in their culture, in their doctrine. And the Catholic Church was quite strong in Poland during communist times, which is unheard of in any other communist country. Religion was suppressed, but not in Poland. So when I say communist countries, I use the term as a label. I don't want to label the people as communists because I imagine a lot of the people didn't agree with the ideology. There you go. Uh, this was taken over by Heineken in 2007. So you've got that macro umbrella. And of course, as I always say, and I should stop repeating myself, but I'm not going to, macro brewers at the end of the day are bean counters. They will cut corners. They will make sure that you are generating profit for them and they will make sure that you are generating profit for their shareholders. And as a result, sometimes flavor is sacrificed for that. But not all the time, I have been proven wrong on a, on a few occasions, which is rare, but occasionally you will get a macro brewer who does a half decent beer. The, the, the most recent one was the Stella Artois Unfiltered. I quite like that, I'm not gonna lie to you, that was quite nice. So there you go. Anyway, let's get this investigated. Right, this is a dark beer, dark lager, Schwarz beer, black beer, whatever you want to call it. It's that. It's a 500ml bottle. It is 3.8% ABV, and there is no brew sheet, unfortunately, but it does contain roasted malt. The IBUs on this are 19, which is really low. So this is for a beer of this ilk that is quite sweet. There's lagers and pilsners that have got higher IBUs than this. But again, as I always say about IBUs, IBUs, if you're not sure, are international bittering units. It basically gives you an indication of how bitter the beer is, but they have to be taken into context. So for example, if you get, a, say, a West Coast Pilsner, a West Coast Pilsner, a West Coast IPA, and that is, say, 42, 43 IBUs. Now, in isolation, 43 IBUs is very bitter, but you have to take it into context with the style. West Coast IPA is a very bitter style of beer. It contains a lot of the American hops that contain grapefruit, bitter grapefruit and pine notes, which give it a bitter finish. That's the style, that's what it is. So 43 IBUs is perfectly normal. Now, if you saw 43 IBUs on a wheat beer or a lager even, that would be very, very unusual. And you'd question what they'd done to make it that bitter. So again, it has to be taken into context. Schwarzbier generally isn't too bitter. You do get some roasted malt bitterness on there like coffee and dark chocolate, but the hot bitterness isn't too pronounced. You do get some, but it's subtle. So hence the reason you've got 19 IBUs on this. So I hope that's cleared that up. Anyway, let's get it open and let's see what's going on. Da -da -da -da. Right, let's get this cap off. Right, I hand washed this glass. So if it's dirty, I fucking give up with glassware and trying to keep it or get it clean. There's the cap for you, if you're interested. I really should empty that. That cup is f overflowing with beer caps. Anyone would think I drank a lot of beer. You won't find a fucking wine cork in it, I'll tell you that now. And here it is. Now I've done a little bit of research on this and this does contain some hop extract on here. And I'm just looking at the state of this glass. This is even worse, look at that. That is even worse than when it comes out of the dishwasher. So I am officially fucking useless at cleaning glassware. not much aroma and I didn't get much aroma from the Corzell either so oh hang on no I'm lying there is some ro sweet roasted malt that's what I'm getting 
quite nice actually. Very caramel-esque. Sweet caramel. And it's, wasn't that a song by Neil Diamond? Mm, it smells quite nice. It is subtle though. There's notes of caramel and that sweet caramel and that roasted malt aroma that you get from porters and stouts, which is quite interesting. Will that come through on the palate? Only one way to find out. Bottoms up. Not bad. Not bad at all. Sweet caramel and roasted malt. That's what you're getting. If you could imagine caramel malt that like you would find on a on a good English ale and a bitterness of dark chocolate and coffee. And it's quite nice. It's it, these uh, dark beers or black beers, whatever you want to call them, they do remind me of an English mild. And the difference being, of course, these are all bottom fermented, the mild that you get over here are top fermented. The flavours, I think, on a mild are a little bit more subtle, but I have tasted some good ones. The general rule of a mild is that it's low ABV and it's sessionable, and this fits that bill quite well, I have to say. There's a little bit more flavour to it than a mild. Not a lot, but a little, and it's more full bodied, I find. Now, for me, mild is the ultimate session beer. It's got just enough flavour, low ABV, and not too much of a body on it, which means you can just chug it and chug it. This has got more body on it, I will say that. And it's got the flavours of a mild, but a bit more pronounced, if you know what I mean. But it's nice, and if you're a fan of mild, you're gonna like this style. Yeah, nice. Now you shouldn't confuse this with the porter. It hasn't got the body of a porter or a stout. And the, as I say, the flavors are toned down. So you don't get big roasted malt. You don't, you don't get the coffee and you don't get the dark chocolate. They are there, but they're subtle. So yeah, this is, it's, I wouldn't say in between a, a mild and a stout, but it's nice all the same. I do like this, very nice indeed. So what is the verdict on Krusevica Royal Schwarzbier? It's good. I think it's on a par with the Kozel, or Kozel, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but I think it's Kozel. And it goes down very nicely indeed. Quite sessionable, you could drink a fair few of these. I don't think it tops the Budvar, though. For me, the Budvar was the best. And as I say, I was gonna do a shootout with the Kozel, but to be honest, I don't think there's much point really because this does remind me of the Kozel when I've just, not today, but a couple of days ago I had some of the Kozel and they're very similar, very nice. And this one I think has got very, very subtle flavours. I don't think it's as big as the Kozel, but it's it's still good. I still think it's got all the characteristics of a, a decent Schwarz beer. So yeah, um, I think I'm going to give that... I think I'll give it a seven and a half because I did prefer, as I say, the Budvar, which was for me the best one so far. Um, I've tried some of the German Schwarz beers, which are nice. I've got one in the fridge as well. I should review that. Uh, the Kostrikscher, I think it is. That was really nice. I did like that. Um, this one, I think it's, it's just okay. I mean, it's not doing anything wrong. It's nice, but there are better Schwarz beers dark beers, dark lagers out there. But if you're, if you're having problems getting the Budvar, which I do tend to find that I, I, can't, get, I can't get it over here. I mean, I, 
I did review it, it's on the channel, a long time ago I did it, and I don't think I've seen it since. And for the life of me, I can't remember where I got it from, but it might have been Beers of Europe. Occasionally, Beers of Europe may get it in, but I think this stuff is a little bit more popular and they do export to the UK, so you might be able to find this a little bit easier. But there you go, I think a seven and a half out, out of 10 is a fair mark, and I recommend it if you like mild. If, if, you, if you like mild and you, you can't get hold of a mild, <laughs> which would be unusual, but if you can't, then this is a good substitute. Just a little bit more full bodied. And there you go. And remember, beer is working class champagne. <laughs>